ever felt the pains of losing a loved one, especially during a lockdown? The deaths of breadwinners. Oh, Jesus Christ. Lovinda is very good to me. Uncontrollable tears. Me and only son. If you help me. Hopelessness. How do I expect justice again? It is assumed that the justice has been denied. While the COVID-19 pandemic was raging, officers of Nigeria security forces killed men while enforcing lockdown. Coronavirus did not kill as many people as the police did. But security operators did in Nigeria. It started in the city of Wuhan, China. A new virus, later called COVID-19, had been detected, bringing Asian and European countries to panic. Then, the virus crossed the Atlantic to Nigeria, first pitching at Lagos on February 27, 2020, with an Italian being the index case. To curtail the spread of this virus, which had brought many powerful countries to their knees, Federal and state governments in Nigeria introduced lockdowns. Based on the advice of the Federal Ministry of Health and the NCDC, I am directing the cessation of all movements in Lagos and the FCT for an initial period of 14 days with effect from 11 p.m. on Monday, 30th March 2020. This came with unintended outcome. Barely 10 days after the president broadcast and similar actions by state authorities, officers of the Nigerian police, army, correctional service and others had extrajudicially killed 13 while enforcing the curfew. The virus at that time had only claimed 6 lives. Some of the most horrific of these killings were recorded in Kaduna, a state in Nigeria's northwest. This is Monday Market, located in Kakuri, in Kaduna South Local Government Area. Due to proximity, residents of Tirkania in Chukun Local Government Area also join in trading every Monday. The next market day was April 2nd, 2020, but owing to docks to dawn curfew imposed by the state government to curb the spread of COVID-19, which by then the state governor Nasul Erufai had tested positive for, residents could not trade as usual. Although the government only announced a temporary relaxation from 3 p.m. Wednesday, April 1st to Thursday, April 2nd, Residents of Tirkania still felt the need to stock up groceries two days after April 4. A makeshift market was established at Bakindobo Junction. Buying and selling started early and on a peaceful note. Residents, see members of civilian JTF from Magira, came to the market to disperse traders, but they were resisted. Usma Mohammed, the general commander, Sabon Garinda Sarawa civilian JTF, considered the move by the Makera civilian JTF as surprising and against the rule. No, you know, that time, that time they don't come with the police. That is why they never tell us say uh, they go come. You know, say it, it the police need more, more, more help them one walk. Even now for Nasarawa, for Makira, the police go pick on, take the JTF for the go there. When the police officers came, all hell was let loose. That market is majorly for food stop sellers. So when they went there to sell their, their farm produce, so they chased them. So when they chased them, some of them, they were able to find their way to the junction by the way, this area. So they now decided to start selling their things. 
So and people were coming and there was totally lockdown. People were not having food even at home to eat. Those who have the money, they come out to start buying little things they can buy so that they can help themselves with. So fortunately and unfortunately enough, uh, we just find out that the first time the police they came, the police they came, they were throwing tear gas. They told them that this place will be orderly. There are numbers of people who will buy the goods. They shouldn't. That is how they left. So surprisingly, after about an hour's time, then they came back the second time. When they came back for the second time, they start shooting. Actually, I was standing just the front of my shop. I was thinking maybe they were just shooting at the air to scare away people. Ah, not until when we see about almost about five dead bodies were on the ground. Even my neighbor, his son was shot, but he was lucky he didn't die. Sani Umar was on his way to visit his father when he heard gunshots. Being the breadwinner of his extended family, Umar frequently check up on his father and others. His intention on April 4, 2020 was to do the routine. However, Umar did not complete the journey on the familiar road. Instead, remain of his chattered skull packed in a black plastic bag was sent to his father. <laughs> When the incident occurred, I was in the market. Then it was said that the Monday market was dispersed and shut down due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Then women started selling their food by the rail. I was in the market, seated, then my son called me and said, Sani has been killed. He was shot on the head and it broke open. We had to fetch his brain in a polythene sack before clothing, taking him to the graveyard from the hospital. Umar was buried late on April 4 due to the untidy impact the bullet left on him and the potential stink it could ooze overnight. Ali Banki is another grieving father. On record, Sabongarin Nasarawa civilian JTF has 177 members, Musa Aliyu, his son, is one of them until his death. 30 year old Musa Aliyu was in the bedroom when he had the gunshot. A moment later, he was further jolted by the sight of two strangers who ran into his family house at Dokaji Street to take refuge. Emboldened by his membership of the civilian JTF, Aliyu stepped out to find out what was going on. Actually, I was at home here when my brother Musa Aliu came back from work. And he now trying to get his bath in the bathroom. Then a certain of people rushed into the, our compound. They, was, they were running. Musa now opened the door and said, what is happening? Why people are running? Because he's a member of JTF too. As a member of JTF, he now calmed the people down and said, stay inside, let me go outside and check what is happening actually. Musa now went out. He went out and see people were running. What is happening? Then he said, police people from that Makera division, that Brewery's division. Yeah. They were the people that are following people. Then this, Musa just fell, fell, fell down. People asked him, what is happening? Musa, what is happening? He said, no problem. As the one boy just wake him up, Musa touch his stomach, he now see blood. Ha -ha. They shot Musa, they shot Musa. We now carry Musa rush to the hospital. While his son was within in fresh blood, Ali Banki made a charge towards his son but was soon confronted by a police officer. He, co he come out from this, this, this place, where this uh, way, before he climbed the, the way there. You see, now you see that, you see they look like this, they look like they, they shoot, him, shoot him here. So by that time I was here, I see one boy when I come from machine to hospital. In the past five minutes, I see my boy. Ah! Musa, Musa, people are people that are crying. Musa, where are you going? The, 
the phone went to the and they go to hospital. <laughs> so I, I said, okay, I'll come back. I wear my shoe, socks. You know, Samba? I wear so I wear shoe. So when I call my dad, I go. I was I said, one police here. He lay down with the gun. He lay down. Everybody the the, the, the rush. He lay down. I don't. I can't know you first. When I, I I went to go outside, he said, "Where are you going to send me? You asking this is my house. Why do you ask me? Why does she my boy?" There was no doctor to attend to Musa at the first hospital. By the time he finally got medical attention at the second, he had lost a lot of blood. He died few hours later. Two teenagers, Aliu Abubakar and Yusuf Mukhtar, also fell to the bullets of the police officers. They have both registered for the secondary school leaving certificate examination, but couldn't sit due to the lockdown. It took some effort to get Abubakar Aliu. Aliu Abubakar's father to narrate the incidents of his son's death. When he did, his tomb was filled with vile. For him, it is justice or nothing. His malcontent is understandable. Given the circumstance, the child he loved most was snatched from him by the people employed and paid to protect him. I came back from the market where we were cheese when a boy came running and told me that your son Abba has been shot. At that time, Abba's corpse was brought to me. It felt like a teal when I was told that it was the police that shot Abba. What was brought to Abu Bakr was a lifeless body with a bullet reading chest. The bullets had already damaged his lungs, making passage of oxygen into cells an impossibility. He was confirmed dead at the hospital. Abu Bakr will never remain the same. My mother passed away, but I did not feel so much pain like his passing, because he does anything I tell him to do. Yusuf Mukhtar also suffered similar feet shot right in front of his family house. When I said she, yes, we were together at the time. He just came back from work and he had wanted to find something to eat. So I went inside my house. But not too long, I started to hear gunshots. As I was about to go out, some people rushed into my house and said that the police were shooting. When I peeped through and saw it was the police shooting, I went back home and sat. It was then I was told that my younger brother was shot in front of the house. He was rushed to the hospital because they shot him in the chest and one of his hand was already ripped off and he died in the hospital. Yabuluwayu <laughs> Ibrahim survived after a medical trip to five hospitals, all bills on the family. By the evening of April 4, news had already spread around Sabongarin Nasarawa that casualty figures had risen to six. The sixth was 22-year-old Abdullahi, a student of Kaduna State Polytechnic. I went to buy something to eat outside. So when I was coming back, I just saw people running. So definitely I collect what I buy. On my way coming back home, I just had a shoot. So I turn around and I see a policeman. He shoot me and he wanted to shoot me again. When my mom come and grab me down. So they rushed me to the hospital. I don't know where I am that time. A bullet that penetrated his chest and forcefully exit his back threw him lifeless on Guagwada Road axis of Tilkania. 
Abdullahi was lucky the bullet spared his spinal cord. None of the officers involved in this attack was on record, subjected to internal probe, nor was any prosecution as stipulated by the law. After the incident, the police released a statement promising an investigation. Zubaira Abubakar, a divisional police officer of Kakuri Police Station, where the trigger-happy officers served, first claimed he was not aware of the killings, but later said he wouldn't comment until he is given a clearance from above. A regular day for inmates at the Kaduna Correctional Center starts as early as 6 a.m. with denominational prayers. This is then followed a few hours later with domestic chores, most times fishing of water. But March 31st, 2020 deviated from the norm. A fresh inmate was suspected to have contracted COVID-19, creating tension among inmates. Soon, the inmates mobilized in numbers demanding the authority to do something about the virus. Five days earlier, the Minister of Interior, Rauf Arik Beshola, had called for a speedy decongestion of prisons nationwide to avert the spread of COVID-19. This demand soon escalated into a confrontation leading to the death of at least five inmates. An earlier investigation by Premium Times Identify the five as Hamid Abdullahi, 25, awaiting trial for a murder case at the Kaduna State High Court, 5. Loki Ujokama, 24, awaiting trial for a rape case at Barna Magistrate Court, 17. Ibrahim Abubakar, 37, awaiting trial for armed robbery. Ya Usalisu, appearing before Magistrate Court, 21, died from gunshot wounds while Oluchuku Uchi, a condemned inmate died from injuries sustained from beating. Aked by this confrontation, the officers became more brutal with their treatment of inmates and tightened security. In one of the brutality confirmed by three of our sources, Officers went on a show of force immediately after the incident. Wisdom Felix, then 27, awaiting trial, was brutally beaten by the warders. He died days later. Wisdom was arrested by men of the Special Anti Robbery Squad in June 2018 during a misunderstanding with his girlfriend, Gudia Elisha. Wisdom was not immediately charged to court. Instead, the officers kept him for about a week, then transferred him to the correctional center awaiting arraignment. Against Nigerian law, which stipulates that persons accused must be charged to court within 24 hours, where a court of competent jurisdiction is located within a radius of 40 kilometers from the police station. Contrary to accounts of witness which attest to domestic fight between Wisdom and the girlfriend, the charge sheets read that Godia was violently attacked while Wisdom was armed with a knife which led to the dislocation of her arm when he robbed her of her Juni M6 mobile phone valued at 50,000 Naira. The family made several attempts to get him out, all to no success. Then the big news came. Sarah reporters published his death around around 11 47 on March 27th. Where are you? Sorry, March, March 31st. March 31st, the publication came around to 12. Around 11 47 was when the publication came. 
a friend forwarded it, she screenshot it and forwarded it to me on WhatsApp. Why did you hold the phone? They did not contact us. So when I had the information, I could not even relate it to my relatives. I could not even tell anybody in my, in my family. Because I wasn't too sure about the whole thing. I wanted to confirm for myself. So on the 1st of April, a friend, we were together with a friend. His, 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 uh, his uh, cousin called him from the prison. That uh, that your friend that was brought to this place has been killed. So after his call, another call came in. A strange number called me again. That he is an inmate. That. He will not disclose his identity, but he know Wisdom is my brother. That I should make haste to locate where Wisdom is and take him for proper medication. That same 1st of April. Otherwise, I will lose my brother. So I started the journey, actually, from that very point. So when I got to the prison, uh, to the prison, I requested, though there was lockdown during that period, I requested to see him. They wouldn't allow me that the, gov the government have imposed lockdown. I can't gain access to my brother. But whatever may be the case, that they are taking very good care of my brother, I should not worry. A few days later, however, the service released a statement admitting that four inmates from the condemned section died after a futile jailbreak. This again turned out to be a lie as at least three of the deceased were awaiting trial inmates. Hamid Abdullahi, Loki Ujokama, Yawusali and Ibrahim Abubakar were not condemned inmates as claimed by the service. The Felix family was not contacted by the correctional service until close to a month. The family was asked to come for their cops, but with strings attached. The protest happened on the 31st. That was when he was victimized. Yes, then he they did not contact us until 27th of April. 27th of April. We had a call from one of the warders. That she were agitated to take to get to her brother, that we should come and take his cup and bury. The family was also asked to write a letter begging for the release of Wisdom's corpse. The family has refused to write this application or swear an oath as demanded. Consequently, the corpse has not been released to them. Premium Times confirmed that family members of some other inmates have cleaned their cups after signing the document and some payments. Wisdom's father, who served in the Nigerian police, has been long dead. His mom has been down on ailments aggravated by the predicament of his son. It's close to a year since Wisdom died, but his siblings will dare not tell their mom. We had a brief meeting amongst us, the family, without our mom, because we, her condition up to now, she doesn't even know that guy is gone. The correctional service is still holding on the cops, but the family wants justice and a fair closure, one that does not require begging. In fact, Wisdom Mom has been very down. It's the same year that they took Wisdom to um, controller um, to uh, correction center that Mommy too broke down. And since then, she has not gotten herself up to now. I don't even know. I don't know. Even when he died, they call us. 
If we want to cry, we go outside. Or I go to, we go to my shop, we we'll cry. Enough that we can cry. Before coming back, if we are coming at our dog pools, we clean our face and wash it before entering their house. Jubilant youth welcome us to Onicha, a commercial city in Nigeria's southeast. But our mission is far from festive. In April 2020, during the lockdown, 22-year-old Ebuka Nwoye was gunned down by a police officer at the new tire market in Port. Residents are still afraid to speak on the incident months later. A few who spoke said the officer Christopher Ozo got drunk at a pub belonging to his girlfriend before he shot Ebuka who was on his way to a football pitch. Some allege that the said girlfriend who was in constant disagreement with Ebuka's mom instigated the attack. The story is notwithstanding, Ebuka is dead, killed by a police officer identified as Christopher Ozo. Despite committing these atrocities, there is no record Mr. Ozo was either investigated by the police or charged court as stipulated by law. People familiar with the officer said he was only redeployed from his former Awada station to a new one, 3.3 police station, where he currently serves. Christopher Ozo. Kosara Chuku has printed copies of her child's assailant. She won't relent until he is brought to book. The same Christopher also. The same Christopher also. I get cry, cry. Because of that boy. That boy. If he come, that Ebuka, Mama, when I come, he go buy something, give me. He go carry water, give me. Say, Mama, you know they die for work. Now, small time, he go make a money. If he help me, <laughs> the first reports that emanated from Ukpo on the day of the incident had it that two people were killed by Ozo. The second was Ekene Obeze, who miraculously survived. The bullets that hit Obeze ripped apart his stomach, revealing his intestines. The assailant did not stop there. Witnesses say he used a knife to cut Obeze at the back, leaving him unconscious. Residents say it is the usual practice of notorious police officers to take every means to kill whoever they attack so that such a person won't witness against them later. With multiple surgeries, Obeze was revived but now live in a constant pain from the wounds. His stomach was stitched vertically. When Premium Times visited 10 months after, Obeze was on a trip to a village where he sought herbal medication to mend his excruciating wounds. He said he needs medical attention and a means to feed his family as he could barely walk. An Onicha-based journalist, Miriam Gotspower, has been following the case since it occurred. Through her Akwaugu Foundation, she has also offered assistance to the family. She is frustrated with the system but hopes some succor comes in terms of justice and assistance to the family who struggled to survive. This person was shot on a broad daylight. I saw it. The videos were everywhere. It was not like them say them say. 
it was there were lots of evidence to it. Okay, yet nothing had been done about it. Government, I even wrote an open letter to the governor on this, and it was just you no know, like a bangalow thing played around, and that was it. Interviewed the PPR of police, Anambra State, Haruna Mohammed, you know, did a whole lot, you know, yet there was nothing. Even reports, stories has it that if the SAS officer is still in service, just he was just, he was just posted from another branch to another one still in Onicha, Anambra State. It's really so bad. It's really so bad. And you know, when justice is delayed or even denied, he, 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 corruption continues. Evil continues. Ebuka was buried in September 2020. His family still awaits justice. About 160 kilometers to Onicha, in the commercial city of Aba, a similar atrocity was perpetrated by yet another police officer on April 5, 2020. Chibusi Okameme, a 29-year-old filling station attendant at Greenmark Energy Limited in Obingua local government area of Abia State, was killed by an officer enforcing lockdown. On that fearful day, we both were here, me, GBC, I mean the deceased person, and we were just cracking a joke. All of a sudden, we started hearing a kind of voice shouting, I'm not feeling fine, I'm, not, I'm from the hospital, you know, and because we were sitting there, so I had to look out. When I look out, I saw Lexus 330 saloon, blue in color. So, and I saw one other bus, this mini bus, blue, also. I didn't know the people that were inside. All we know is that people were shouting. So, now my colleague now rushed out to see what was going on. On his approaching, they had to follow him. Then, uh, it happened that there was a policeman inside the car shouting, if anybody come close here, I'll shoot somebody and nothing will happen, you know? I just have to sit back. Then that my colleague, it happened that the person they were hitting is one of our customers here. So when that my colleague rushed out to go and rescue him, maybe he was telling them to leave, that is our customer, and the policeman that came down from the vehicle, shot at him, that's what happened. The officer was identified as Stanley Azu was then serving at Ohuru Isimiri Police Divisional Headquarters. Chibusi's aged mom has been in sorrow since the incident. My name is Aloma Chikesia Okameme. I am 60 years old. Chibusi was my son. I gave birth to them, twins. But his twin died of convulsion when they were three months old. GBC survived and grew up to the time his elder sister took him with her to Abba. On the 4th of April 2020, my oldest son got married traditionally. On the 5th being a Sunday morning, I spoke with GBC, my son, because I had earlier asked him to try and attend his brother's traditional marriage. But he said he couldn't make it because of the lockdown. He asked if all went well about the ceremony, and I said yes. All was all right. He asked if I went to church, and I told him I couldn't go because I was tired. I asked him, what about you? Did you go to church? He said no, that he was at home doing laundry. This was happening on that Sunday morning. But by the time it was around 3 to 4 p.m. same day, his older sister, my first daughter, called me and told me not to call Chibisi's phone line again, that he has lost his phone. I began to wonder how my son, whom I spoke with this morning, could have lost his phone. I immediately called his phone, 
But my son-in-law was the one who answered the phone and told me quickly that he was going to call me back. But I noticed that the background on his own end was noisy. I ended the call and started preparing my meal. Abia State Public Relations Officer of the Nigerian Police, Geoffrey Obonna, confirmed to Premium Times that Officer Azu has been dismissed after some internal trials. Any of such cases involving a policeman has been charged to court. Such cases were being charged to court after investigations. And it may interest you to know that before any such cases are charged to court, the police officer involved must be shown the way out of the job. So as it is, the policeman behind that dastardly act is no longer a police officer. He was tried in an ugly room, then dismissed, after which he was arraigned. And that case is pending in the courts. But the case is currently stalled. Lawyer to the family, Jibuzo Ekpehe, said the police still await advice from the Department of Public Prosecution, DPP, to continue the case as the magistrate court where it was formerly charged has no jurisdiction on murder cases. Still in the southeast, the death of 18-year-old Chidi Ojiaro still remain a mystery to people of Nguzu Eda in Afikbo South local government, Ebonyi State. She said that Chidi was coming back from church when this thing happened. Close to a year after, villagers are still afraid to comment on the incident. A few who did on the condition their names will not be mentioned said they had gunshots in the evening of April 4 and moments later the news that Chidi was dead. They alleged that the teenager was only caught in the middle of a political struggle between two big wigs in the community, the Afikpo South Local Government Chairman, Eni Uduma Chima, and the lawmaker representing Afikpo Southwest in the State Assembly, Nkemka Okoro Onuma. They alleged that supporters of these politicians, mostly cultists, have been in constant conflict in the area in recent times and one of their disputes turned bloody caught Chidi. Premium Times reached out to both politicians to give an account of their alleged involvement in the death of the teenager, but none responded. Premium Times attempted to find some answers to this from the police. The spokesperson of the State Police Command, Lovett Oda, said the issue happened long ago and as such, she no longer had details to share. Stories of police officers harming and killing Nigerians abound, but that of police officer killing another cop came as a surprise. Lovenda Olekwachi was on traffic duty at the popular Eni Karanabout, Port Harcourt, on April 23, 2020, when she met her untimely death. What could have led Beatrice Oziah, a sergeant, to kill 35-year-old Lovenda? That day, there was task force packing people's load over here. So everybody was in you know, Rome. Nobody can with all the people that are still at the roadside. All of them have run away. So later, the, some, there's some boys from the park, or the roadside road that normally stand on the road. So they are the ones that start using coke bottle to throw on the police and the task force. So the task force people, like the, the policeman, one of them said, officer release is gone, officer release is gone. So before the officer start releasing gun onto those people on that way. So that officer was, I was sitting here watching the direction because it was started on the down road. He now that his gun was somewhere like this. It's not even up, like it's not releasing up. He keep it somehow like this. So shooting. And he believed that he was shooting the park side though, because I was here watching the movie the way everything was happening. So the policeman was sitting somewhere there. 
So as the parking was so much, she now stand up to come and help some of the people. Because sometimes, when the task force people come, the police people that used to stand here, they used to go and defend the goods for the owner. Sometimes they will not leave the goods for them. So that's what happened that day. Immediately she stand up to go and defend that one that particular day. I saw how she fell down immediately. Like, I even the one that even let her rush, I see that the woman is already dead before I now come out from the place. So that's the way everything happened. Once Osaya and his colleagues saw that Lovenda was dead, they zoom off. The traders were quick to alert Lovenda's colleague at the Eneka police station some 500 meters away. The officers chased and soon caught up with the fleeing assailant. Namdi Omoni, a spokesperson of River State Command said the assailant has been dismissed from the police and charged to court. Lovenda was survived by a two-year-old son Aids, parents, and siblings. We journeyed to Izu in Eche local government to visit the family. To her immediate family, a breadwinner is gone. Oh, Jesus Christ. Lovinda is very good to me. At my son. My son does stop school because of person where we train him. He goes to us where the that will be it for me. So I feel it very hard. Many things the Lovenda is doing for me. Now, nobody is doing it for me again. Every month, Lovenda has to send money for me. But now, I just did like this, nobody there. The family alleged the police is not handling the case appropriately. First and foremost, we consulted a lawyer, one barrister, Okere. Right. We took the decision of uh, bringing in a lawyer to get justice. We've uh, written a letter to the governor. I've met prominent chairsons who are bad fellows in politics with the governor to reach him to tell him if he is not aware, for him to know that his tax force killed my daughter. And the people has gone. This is one of the letters we wrote that got up to the chief of staff of the governor. He endorsed and nothing has been done. Equally, the matter, the police came in. The commissioner of police was here, like as you stated. He came with his team of police from the state. Then. They came on condolence uh, ground. Mr. Matthew further alleged that the police was yet to pay any entitlement after the family had perfected document as advised. With no justice in sight, Mr. Matthew is now frustrated. Since uh, the governor, who supposedly, you know, who's supposed to be on the side of helping the family, or helping myself as the father, has denied paying attention. And two, in the case that is been, I mean, a matter that happened here in River State, or that came from Abuja, which means the whole justice has been denied. There must be somebody somewhere, you know, whom I don't know. I am not a policeman, I am not an officer. How will I dig out to, to know who ordered who to bring the case fight? And how do I expect justice again? April 2nd, during the log lockdown, on the 2nd of April, I was in my house here. I wasn't sent. So I called my son, Joseph. Now you come and carry me for, go and take some uh, medical checkup. 66 year old Monday Pesu was ill when he called his son Joseph to assist him to the hospital. Joseph was halfway into the journey, then he was stopped at the Ubeji checkpoint. One of the soldiers at the checkpoint identified as Ilekura Ajayi was unsatisfied with Joseph's conduct. In the morning around after 8, 8 to 9, something like that, I'm at home when I heard the gunshot, he was shot. Well, he was pursued at Ubeji, 
all the way from Beji to this place. They were shooting at him all the they get here. They shot his tire and they shot him inside the car too. They shot him through the back of the the car, which hit him at the side. Once they had gunshots, residents trooped out. A call was put to Monday. They called me as I get there. I saw a police van there. I said, wait, Joseph, wait, Joseph. They said, they asked me, calm down, calm down, calm down. I said, wait, Joseph, I want to see my son. Calm down. The boy just tell me, say, look at my son, Joseph. He's the one lying down the ground there, dead. I said, where is this your man? I saw this your man. He stood, stood, he stood up, uh, he stand by a gate there. I said, my friend, what is the problem? You better kill me now. I'm a, I'm a elder man. I said, as far as you have killed my son, kill me, join. This act by Ajayi is against the promise of the Nigerian army when the lockdown started afresh. Since the incident, there is no known investigation or reprimand for the Aaron soldier. This is against provision of section 106 of Nigeria's Armed Forces Act, which subjects a soldier who without justification or excuse unlawfully kills another person to death upon conviction by a court martial. Hearing on the matter is about to commence, and um, like the father said, since uh, no one came, I don't know of any law that bars the authority from coming to talk to a, a bereavement of uh, church. I don't know of any. So since um, there was no concern from the authority, even as we speak. We decided to, to approach the court and at the end of the day we hope and believe that uh, justice will be done. Careful children dissipating their energy after a breakfast. This used to be the reality of 10-year-old Usman until April 2020. On 20th April, while most part of Jigawa state was on lockdown, Usman had gone to the Sankara market in Ringim local government to make some extra money. Usman was only a boy that was industrious. He was, I did not know myself until after the incidents. He was there only helping people to put uh, animals in the in the car you buy you buy a goat he helps you put it at least give him five naira he there that way he thought he could do something for himself so i did not realize this to myself until after the incident had happened while the buying and selling was going on police officers stormed the market to disperse traders first they released tear gas then gunshots were heard by residents. When the first settled, Osman was lying unconscious in the market. I was really running but when I heard the gunshots, I came back and saw the body laid there. I look up, I even thought he was not the one. Then I realized it was him, Osman. We took him, ran towards there boarded a bike and rushed him to the hospital. When I went into the hospital, I found him on the, on the, what do you call it, on, the, on their bed, screaming in pain. And uh, I saw the shot under his ear. Between April 20 and 23, Usman was taken to four different hospitals. He was set for a surgery on 23rd when he died at Aminu Kano Teaching Hospital, Kano. Shortly after Osman was taken to Sankara Primary Health Care, residents of the community trooped out to protest what they believe was a case of extrajudicial killing of an innocent boy by a police officer. But the police have a contrary narrative. The then Police Public Relations Officer Pierre Ojigawa Police Command, Audi Jinjiri, said the police went to the market 
to enforce a shutdown order imposed on markets in the state but was met by a resistance by locals who peddled stones at them. The boy was hit by one of the stones peddled by the angry locals, he said, denying that a police officer shot Usman. Barely one year after, the question of what or who killed Usman still hung in the air. We tracked the first medical personnel who attended to Usman in search of answers. I just give him a first aid treatment and require him to ring him to the hospital for further management. I don't know whether it's a gunshot or stone or something. We don't know, but the only the medical officer bring him to the hospital be diagnosed that. Further, we requested for Usman's medical report at the Aminu Kano Hospital, but this request was not granted. Abdul Qadir has lost confidence in the capacity of the Nigerian system to get him justice. I virtually did nothing because I know the kind of society we are living in. It was definite that it was the police, but they will never, in their usual way, they will never accept that they did anything. Coronavirus did not kill as many people as the police did. In Nigeria. However, Usman's sister would stop at nothing to seek justice for his dead. Sumaya is a 400 level student of Bayou University, Kano. I feel very bad. I cried and cried. At that time, I tried to take legal action. down and corona issues so I can't do anything but always I'm thinking for oh, what to do. Deaths, life injuries, denials, cover-up, injustice. It all appears there will never be justice for the victims. With so much distrust, the Nigerian justice system more than ever have a lot to prove to regain some confidence. How will the system respond? Time will tell. Posterity will judge and we will be here to document. <laughs>